here in London. We're going to Westminster Abbey, that's Parliament. And uh, I was reading a book, because it's 2017, about, well, I was thinking on New Year's resolutions, and then uh, I thought of the subject of love, because for the New Year's, a lot of people get lonely. I think the most suicides, the most breakups are all in December. So now we're coming into the new year. I was here in London for New Year's. That's Big Ben over there, Westminster Abbey. That's the church where all the kings and the queens. I think we can cross right here. Uh, kings and queens are crowned. Anyway, so I'm reading this book by, or today's book of the day, Richard Sternberg. So he's a professor. I think he was at Yale. Now he's at Cornell or something. And he, he came up with this theory that's really fascinating called love triangle theory. So if you want to know why relationships uh, a lot of times in the modern world fall apart, why 50 plus percentage of divorces, uh, marriages end in divorce, this book tries to explain it. And uh, I thought it was interesting. So triangle theory he came up with at the beginning of his career, which is, is that it right there? Elizabeth is <laughs> from Norway. She's half American. Dana, are you having fun? I'm having a lot of Rome. fun. Rome. I'm cold, man. I'm just cold. <laughs> <laughs> Rome's freezing. Anyway, uh, <coughs> triangle theory says there's intimacy, passion, and commitment. And he has a whole system of consummate love, companionative love, fatuous love. But then years later in his career, he realized, <coughs> or he thought, there's a more complete theory. <clears throat> his first theory he think he thought wasn't didn't explain it all. And he came up with this theory called love as a story. And he said there's 26 main stories that people subconsciously act out. It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. <clears throat> so there are things like horror story, war story, garden story, travel story, um, there's one called the police story, government story. And each one's a metaphor for how people act. And, and I can sum up this whole book. The reason people get divorced, the reason people break up, especially in the modern world where you have more choice, is that never date somebody who doesn't have the same subconscious story as you. That's the number one predictor of failure in a relationship. And this, I think this applies to business too when you got different stories because there's for example the fantasy story so some people think that love is a fantasy like Cinderella story you were actually just talking about this yes I was and then there's other people that have what's called the garden theory which they think you have to cultivate love so if somebody with a fantasy story is dating somebody with a garden uh, story they won't get along because the fantasy story person will be like why isn't everything perfect and the garden story is going well, we got to work on it. And so they'll end up uh, over time, basically naturally uh, separating or naturally feeling. It, what happens, he says, going back to triangle theory, is intimacy drops because people don't feel connected. So you really have to find, he actually has on his, I'll put a link below. He has a link to a questionnaire. You can try to ask, uh, answer these questions and figure out which of the 26 stories you have I was trying to do mine there's one called the art story where you see love as art there's one called the collector I thought that was interesting where sometimes people date people just because they they fit like check boxes they don't really like them but they're they got the right job or they have the right look um, but there's not really that connection you know so you should take that test I'll put the link it's on Richard J Sternberg's blog you answer, actually it's in, on psychology today, and you answer 20 questions or whatever, and you try to figure out which of those uh, stories are yours. I th and, and one thing that's interesting, most people have more than one story. You get them from childhood. Usually you act out the story. That, for example, the horror story is why women's, part of why women stay in relationships that have domestic violence, because their story is that's what love is like. So they stay in that cycle of somebody, you know, hitting them or beating them up because that's their conception of love. And so obviously it's not healthy. And he talks a little bit in the book on how you can try to change your love story if you got the wrong love story. Here's Westminster Abbey. Here we go. It's 
kind of cool. That's a cool church, right? You can actually go to church here. Here, let's go inside. Oh no, this is St. Margaret's. No, this is the church. This is part of it. Here we go. We got history here. This thing was built. What year? Uh, 1523. She's got an English major. Yeah. English history major. All these people. What percentage of people have healthy relationships? This book's, <laughs> I think statistically, it's only about one in five relationships, maybe 20% that are actually thriving, you know? It's kind of cool, isn't it? A lot of people got married in there. I wonder what percentage of them were happy marriages. Anyway, what do you think's your love story? Take the quiz and then come back and leave a comment. I think mine's a combination. There's one called the teacher-student one. There's different classifications. There's, there's like, uh, what did he call it? Oh, I can't remember right now. It's a fairly complex system, but I broke it down relatively simply for you. There's, there's asymmetrical, that's what I was gonna say. So that's like a student-teacher where one person takes on the role of teaching the other person. There's the victim one or addiction one. Look at that. Anyway, leave a comment. I thought it was interesting. I hope in 2017 you have an amazing new year. If you're not already in love, I hope you find love. And if you are in love, I hope you enhance what you already got.